Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, actually, over here, Aussie accents are right up there with Scottish accents for, uh, hey, we really like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... Hamish, you Hamish take was able to get away with make, murder here. Apparently, you can't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every time, uh, every time um, Hamish wanted to get away with something, he'd just turn up the Aussie and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Dennis has just posted the uh, the early photos of the making of the tasting. Oh, cool. It is looking good. Yeah. Is that the bar wow. there in the back corner I'm looking at, is it? Or is that an office? Oh, I can't see anything. Where's he posted oh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hang on. Uh, yeah, you may not. Yeah. <laughs> Out, out by the roller door, there's an office or a bar. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, um, yeah. I just added you to the group. <laughs> it's our live chat group on, on Skype, so you just got added. Wow, that room looks like it's going to be large and in charge. Look yeah, at that. it does. Yeah, with a mezzanine upstairs for all the important stuff, I take it? Or, or is that uh, is that going to be tasting room as well? Um, upstairs, that's my husband's office upstairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where that's where the important right. business stuff happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> and yes, that that is the bar. I'm told in the corner there. Oh, yeah. very, looking good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Woohoo! Construction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's posting more pictures. There's the outside of the building. Yeah. Yep. And it's, for the those of you that are listening live and not in the live chat, this is what you're missing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you were in the live chat, you'd be getting pictures. You'd be getting pictures, you know? yeah. <laughs> All right, so it looks like a like a standard the standard innocuous Aussie shed from the outside. You'd never imagine yep. the treasures within. <laughs> it's, it's a stealth it's a meter, huge, it, and it's a huge shed. Like it's bigger than my house. Now, see what yeah. we call what we call uh, where I come from. That's called a pole barn. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't know why it's called a pole barn, but that's what they call it where I come from. So. That's a shed, and we put one in recently for my um, old man up at his farm, and um, it was four separate poles for the concrete slab. It was that. It's that kind uh, of bigger, it's bigger shed. So, um, it if you if you are looking at the photo, just take note of the uh, the size of the forklift there. It's not a small building. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Hey, do, do you um do you get to go uh, visit uh, other meteries in Australia and do you like you know check them out and see what the uh, I guess it would it wouldn't be saying asking what the competition is doing but just you know see what other people are doing and and get some ideas or do you do you have some favorites that you like at all from um I haven't tried any other meteries like we do have a couple of wineries here in South Australia that make mead as well and I have tried. I have tried them. Some are good, some are bad. But I haven't tried. <laughs> yep. Um, but I haven't tried. Uh, though I have tried um, one from Peter from Tasmania. His are good. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't tried any any others other than those. I have noticed that myself. There's, there's no mediocre meats in Australia. It's either either that's just how cruel I am as a judge. But it's either really good or it's really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> well, I think the only reason that no, it's I not like that right. here is that we have more meads, you know. It's, it's just, you know, more yeah. memories. But there was a point at which there was the really good ones, and then there were the why did you not dump this down to sink before you put it in bottles ones. Yes. Yes, yes. There was a certain man in Texas selling something that I thought that of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> David will know who we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know how much we're allowed to slam. Yeah, no, so we're not gonna we're not gonna that. slam a meadery and got me live. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those were uh, not the best meads I've ever had. <laughs> David's. You know what I was impressed by at at the at the cup. Now that you mention it, though, was um the much maligned Chaucer's. I was very oh, no. impressed by that. Was quite by good. the way they they uh, are producing now. Oh um, yeah. They reformulated about six years ago, and they went from yeah. being basically the Budweiser of Meads to, um, or you know, if it's Australia, the Fosters of Meads, uh, to <laughs> uh, to being a gold medal winner in the Maser Cup literally in a year. So yeah, they wow. were they were like they weren't. I didn't think they were stellar, but 
you know, I was expecting it to be terrible. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, really it's, quite a solid, good. it's a solid, basic, traditional. It's yeah. too sweet for me now, but, you know. Um, I liked it. Yeah, it's really good and warmed I think with I had spices their... in it. I really like it warmed with spices in it. I think they yeah. had a raspberry too. No, the raspberry ones, They too. did, yeah. yeah. That was really nice. Sorry, just while we were talking about maligned um, uh, meter is I just wanted to, to, to say that because I've never heard a, a, a positive thing about them and I just wanted to say, hey, they're really not that bad, so get, you know, try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. believe the, the, the negative press from 10 years ago. Yeah. That reputation started uh, long, like about 10 or maybe, I guess, 15 years ago when it was really bad. But um, I got to tell you, it's right now, it's a, a good gateway mead now yeah, because it it's... It's inexpensive. If it's anything, like $9 it's, a bottle. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah, it's very inexpensive. It's everywhere. I mean, if a right. place doesn't have any other mead, they'll have Chaucer's. Chaucer's is right. made by a large California yeah. winery, Chaucer's. so so they've got they've got um, they've got um, uh, you know market penetration because they're because they're from a large California winery. So they're not you know they're, the largest meadery we've got is you know quite small compared to Chaucer's and you know the production levels that they have because it's actually Bargetta Winery. Right, so they're so they're the Budweiser of mead in more ways than one. Well, they were. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't like to I don't like to name them that anymore. Uh, that was what we used to call them, but I don't like to name them that yeah. anymore because it is good now. Whereas Budweiser is totally not good. I don't care how right, they're right. they're just totally not good. But uh, right. so we're not going to malign any meaderies. But hey, beer, <laughs> beer <laughs> we're just going to slam all. No, well, I was... We can slam beer breweries, that's fair game. Well, what, what I was referring to is by calling it the Budweiser of meat is that it's actually very commercially successful because it's everywhere, you know? Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yep. It really is, yeah. And, and again, it's inexpensive. It's um, I used to call it the Boone's Farm of meads too, and for for those of you that don't live here, Boone's Farm is like uh, rot gut wine. It's like <laughs> with alcohol in it, and um, and it's super sweet and super cheap, and comes in a screw top bottle, and usually you drink it out of a paper bag. Um, it's anyway, funny. yeah, it's how teenagers yeah. lose their virginity around right here. Pretty much, yeah. It was the very <laughs> first, <laughs> yeah, very first alcoholic <laughs> beverage many of us had when we were, especially if we grew up during the '60s and '70s. Uh, you know, was like the thing to do, um, but yeah, it. Uh, but yeah, no. Chaucer's has got a gold medal, you know, an international gold medal winning, or at least they did. I don't know what they medaled this year. I didn't look, but uh, they they took that gold the year after they reformulated, <laughs> which was that, interesting. Hamish, have you ever seen? Uh... Go ahead, Anne. Sorry. sorry, go on, Vicky. Oh, I was just gonna say. I was just uh, wondering, Hamish, have you ever seen them? Um... <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go. I'm gonna show you. No, I was just gonna. Say no, you go. No. Uh, Jay, Chaucer's stop. Like Mike Hall from Rabbit. I'm done. Come down. And, uh, done with their Radio 101. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, Ann, go. <laughs> All right. Have you ever seen um, our equivalent would be the Maxwell's brand, which is in every uh, big wine store? Do they enter competitions at all? Maybe it's time we started poking them to reformulate and think about. A few different options or entering comps. I think Chaucer's is way bigger than Maxwell. So who are you directing the question at? Sorry. Uh, you actually, you you um. Oh, me. See a lot I, of the I comps. Yeah. I haven't seen Chaucer's entered into any competition. That really would have been a good one to bring up last week because uh, Sean. We were talking to Sean last week. Yeah. Sean uh, yeah. Uh, runs the runs the WA. Um, Competition and is really deep into the into that kind of stuff, but I've never seen them in a in a wine competition. No, so I want to start looking into the uh, beer competitions as mentioned last last um, last week. So, <laughs> and, Dennis uh, is bagging on Maxwell's on, right on, now. <laughs> well, yeah, De Dennis. Does, does, uh. Dennis, I, I I've got to say to you, Maxwell's does not in any way compare to your mead. Um, I, no, I, as not. we've discussed, we're not going to diss any meadery, but yes, yours is <laughs> quite spectacular in, <laughs> in comparison. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> they are quite different products. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him I have a bottle of their liqueur and he says throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. They're, I didn't well, I care. I didn't care for their meads, but the liqueur is not horrible. You know, it's it's yeah, not, you that's know. the best. Yeah. Back to making meads. Um, do you do a lot of experimentation to fine tune each recipe before you put out your five liter batch to your tasting group, or do you just make it and it comes out however it comes out, and then you worry about fine tuning it later? Yeah, I just throw all the ingredients in together and hope, ho- hope for the best, get them to try it, and if they like it... Do it again? Then it goes, do it again. Cool. That's, that's how most of them came, you know. If you everything up front, what, what, about, um, what about nutrients? Do you, do you do a nutrient regime, or are you all up front with that too? It all, it all goes in at the same time. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. That's that's remarkable for such a good meat. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. Now I need some of this honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, good I, luck with that. I just throw, it's a state I, you know, secret. I just throw it all in together. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, a, a few years back on the uh, on the Got Meat website, um, Medicine Fay started uh, experimenting with um, so that, that same exact thing with the, the lazy man's meat. I don't know if anybody remembers that thread. And it was exactly that. He was trying to figure out how little work he could do to still produ- and still produce a good meat. And uh, from what I remember, putting everything in up front uh, seemed to be working very well for him. Um, I think I unless Joe you're Mattioli doing... already a- proved that. Well, unless you're doing a really challenging ferment, I think it'll probably work out fine. I mean, for the first half of my brewing career, I put everything in up front too. Yeah, I would put everything in up front and do nothing. Thing. Yeah, and I would do nothing with it until it was time to rack it and then buy oh, it. I didn't even aerate half of my stuff. Oh for yeah, the no, first half. I never did. I would, I would occasionally yeah, take know. the bucket and cover the hole. Uh, I would pull the airlock, cover the hole of the airlock with a, with a pad of paper towels and shake the crap out of it and then put the airlock back in and forget about it for another month. And I made some oh, amazing... I didn't even do that much. I didn't even do that much. But yeah, I mean, we still managed to make some pretty amazing meads by luck somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't so much. I, I sometimes I think that for for especially for beginners, we're we're we've we've been yeah m- bettering the way we do meat, but sometimes I think we've also been complicating a little bit too much. Maybe so, uh, maybe overcomplicated, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. You know, I'm not saying that any of the things that we're doing are bad because most of them help us make better meat. But uh, you know, maybe but yeah, for, just because you don't do all of the special things doesn't mean it's going to be bad. It just means right. you might have done better if you'd taken all the steps, but it doesn't mean it's not, it can't be good. Well, yeah, and, I, and also in many cases it means that it's not necessarily going to be, well, okay, it might be better, but it's almost certainly going to be faster, you know, so. Yeah, that, that's one thing too, but I mean, you're, you're also talking of a, a lot of cases where they're saying that a low, f- a, a slow, steady fermentation actually gives you a better product than a quick and clean. I mean, as long as it's mm. slow and clean, you know, mm-hmm. there, there are yeah. some people who want it really, really slow by low temperature and some people who want it really quick by good nutrients. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, where's the that, balance there? I'm, I'm, I'm slow. I'm slow with my hand up. It, it just, that it's one competition for me everywhere. Slow, slow and cold is, is the only way to do it. And by slow, I mean two weeks. Like it's not, not, you know, that slow, but you know, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I, I put it in the fridge. I, I set the fridge on. 16 to 17 degrees um that's in celsius of course <laughs> um which is because my head's not that good about 62.6 so a bit 63 degrees i, I would normally set it to um mm-hmm. and or maybe maybe a couple of degrees lower than that sometimes depending on what i want and i, I normally use k1v um and yeah it, it takes a couple of weeks but i keep it at that temperature and it just chugs through it um makes a really nice gentle um made with with good ar- aromatics it's that's winning prizes it's, it's got nothing like the mouthfeel that uh, um that um sue ann manages to to get out of her honey but uh yeah. it does have some 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 uh, very nice points about it uh, why because you're, you're the mead. low and slow tends to produce a thinner mead is that what you're saying uh i wouldn't have said thin thinner I, I, Look, there's there's no way to describe Sue Ann's meads it's without got texture. Them. I'm sorry. It's got it a is, ton of it, texture. It, you like want to chew it, it, it <laughs> and yet it's not sweet like you want to chew it. 
Um, right. So it, it just, it's just a really 